It's the only podcast on earth with two Major League Baseball All-Stars, Dimitri Young, who is not here, Jason Kindle, who is, Lars from Rancid. Lars, what's up? Uh, uh, D-Mac, four-time Stanley Cup champion, will be here in a few. No P.D. Williams tonight. So this is the Wrestling Perspective. I'm Dennis Farrell. Guys, we have a very special guest, somebody I'm excited to actually get to know. We've watched him over the last year plus with the dark order i am pleased to present some of you guys may know him as cody some of you guys may know him as 10 some of you guys may know him as preston or vance whatever we want to call him he's here cody preston vance 10 dark (laughs) order what's going on my friend what's up man how's it going guys that had to have been the most unique intro you've gotten yet right dude uh, dude backstage at aw I get called so many different names. Like I feel like half the people don't even know my real name's Cody, to be honest. So, <laughs> you know what? I had a conversation with Lex Luger a couple years ago, and he was telling the story that someone was—I I don't know—he's walking through the airport, and I wish I could remember his real name now. But they were shouting out his real name. He went to school with him, we didn't even turn around because he didn't even recognize what his old name was. He's like, "That's what the wrestling industry does to you, as you yeah, dude. known as." xyz and you totally forget what your real name is right uh, cody i i gotta ask you one question because i do have to take off but i want to know i mean d- you're just a monster in the dark order amazing um how did you get into wrestling how did you like i want to be a professional wrestler i mean football a- athletics in high school and this and that like how did yeah, so, you get to where you're at now so when i was i want to do this my whole life so like i was eight years old and the teacher asked everyone, what do you want to do when, you're, when you grow up? And everyone's putting baseball player, hockey player, all this stuff. I put pro wrestler, like pro wrestler on TV. That's what I wanted to do. And um, it was kind of like, you know, I had this dream. I didn't know how to get into it. And then um, in college, I did like really into um, weightlifting and did bodybuilding and stuff. And I'm like, man, like, I wish I knew how to get into this. And all my roommates were like, you should try because like you have a good look, whatever. And then um, I got in contact with Danny Cage from the Monster Factory. And he, uh, he invited me down to uh, like a tryout camp type thing. So I went, uh, I finished my last exam in college and literally the next day just got my car and went to New Jersey. Like didn't even walk at graduation. I just moved to New Jersey and then uh, now I'm here. <laughs> Cause your athletic is all could be. And yeah. I mean, you play other sports growing up. I'm you, obviously you said hockey earlier when we were talking off air. hockey and, uh, and baseball. Gotcha. I mean, it's so anyhow, it is, it is so much fun to watch it. And I, I know Lars, and then it's going to be taken over um, here shortly. And I do have to leave. And I'm sure I'll pop in because I, I, I talk a lot and I interrupt a lot. But I'm going to let them take off right now because uh, this is just an honor to, for, to have you on this show. And thank you very thank much. You. Thank you, sir. Well, let's get started with your journey to AEW because I am a huge fan of stuff in here in Michigan. If you're not, there's XICW and Clash. What were some of the independent scenes in Michigan that you kind of ran through on your way to AEW? So the funny thing is I've never worked an indie show in Michigan. Um, I did one, I did one show in Michigan and it was actually for Evolve. Hmm. Um, and it was in Livonia, but outside of that, I didn't know no shows in Michigan cause I lived in New Jersey. So I did a bunch of like Northeast shows and then I moved to Georgia. And so I did a bunch of like South shows and I did a bunch of shows out in California and stuff, but I've never done an indie show in Michigan. Wow. Yeah. Which is, which is, yeah, like it's it's kind of like I don't want to say heartbreaking because I, I don't really so want to do the You have to leave all the tickets. It won't be heartbreaking, trust me. <laughs> but I mean, yeah. So it was weird, never like really wrestling in front of my like none of my friends have seen me wrestle live or anything like you know in person. So it's kind of like I don't know. It's one of those things where I don't regret it, but I wish I could have wrestled in Michigan more. I mean, why would you? If you got to skip the minor leagues and go straight to the pros, there's there's nothing to hundred percent. Hundred percent, and and I, I'm very open about like I hate I hated indie wrestling. Um, I just like to me it's like I got into this to be it like you know like I want to be on TV and like I don't want to do indie wrestling you know. Um, but you do learn a ton doing the indies, you know. I didn't do the indies nearly as long as a lot of guys do, but I did do them for five years, you know, and and I made a ton of really good connections and and friendships, and so like. I mean, so you would have I ever paid go back? No. What's that? You have paid your dues, and that's, that's part of it. Um, like, would I ever, like, want to go back to the Indies? Hell no. But I'm glad 
the journey took me through them, you know. Who were some of the guys on the indie circuit in that short time that you faced that really helped you grow then? Uh, QT Marshall, I've been with since the very beginning. He was like my first coach. Uh, Damian Priest, who's in WWE now. Um, and Matt Riddle, who's in WWE now. Um, those three were like who I kind of came in the business with. Uh, Nick Camarado, who's been on AEW Dark, uh, of the big dude, hairy dude. Uh, he's he's been one of my re really close friends. Um, but those those first three are the really main people who like like they were like my mentors, kind of. Not Riddle so much, as he kind of started around the same time. But like uh, Damian Priest and QT. I mean, they've been my coaches. Like I still, I'm, I mean, I talk to QT every day because I mean he lives in Georgia. But Damian, I still talk to a bunch, and I texted him last night after the Royal Rumble and stuff. And so I mean, those two are definitely the two I attribute most of most of it to. What uh, you grew up on wrestling as a wrestling fan? What did you cut your teeth on? What were some of the? I mean, were you a WWE guy, WCW? What were some of the shows you watched as you were growing up? Um, oh, sorry, uh, WWE for sure. Um, up north, WCW wasn't like super popular, so like I didn't really know anything about WCW till going back and watching it as an adult. Cause I started watching wrestling in like 2000. So at that point, like it was WCW, you know, ended in what 2001, I think. Mm -hmm. So I didn't, I wasn't there for the heart of WCW. So no, I was total. I just watched WWE growing up. I didn't know there was anything else really. Jason favorite wrestler. Who was your favorite wrestler growing up? I mean, I have a few, the rock and all of the X were definitely my favorite. Okay. I love the, Man, dude, I got kicked out of school so many times for doing the the suck it thing. And <laughs> I always had the suck it shirt, man. I love that shit. So, like, being able to work with Billy Gunn is, like, and he was, like, legit one of my favorites in DX. Was, like, Billy Gunn and X-Pac were my two favorite. And yeah. I got to tag with X-Pac on an indie show in Tennessee. And it was, like, I got to go on the ring and do the, the suck it with him. And I was like, this is so, this is so cool, you know? That's awesome. You know, I came out when I when I was hitting. I came out to Road Dog. Oh, you didn't know. <laughs> came out there. For, that's that was my come out song to uh, that when I came up to hit. So, very cool. Lars, go ahead, dude. Oh, um, well, I'm just kind of listening in on the conversation, getting to know him. Um, so, you know, you said you spent a little time in the Indies. We're out in California. Who did you wrestle for? Um, APW. Yeah, I thought I've seen you on one of their shows before. Yep. Uh, yeah. APW was the main one I worked for because Cody used to work for them a lot when he did his little indie run. Yeah. So um, me and Cody became friends and he basically gave me his whole like he gave me the stamp of approval and like gave me like his list of indie people to go work for. And he would contact these guys for me, which was, you know, awesome. And that's what really helped me that 2019 I hit the indies like pretty hard because of Cody. And that's what really helped me get to where I'm at now. But APW was the main one out there. Uh, West Coast Pro was one out there. And there was one more. I can't remember the name of it, but APW was the, the main one. Yeah, no, APW is local to me. I live in San Francisco and okay. you know, lived in the Bay Area my whole life. So APW and there was another one called Big Time Wrestling. And I, and I, I thought I had seen you before. Ooh, yeah, I, I did that one as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big Time Wrestling. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, you know, because the, there's a lot of guys, obviously, who wrestled in a lot of the indies here in California, like Will Hobbs. Yeah. You know, a cage i mean the list can go on and on and on in yep. aew and that's one of the reasons why i love the programming so much because it's like as if i'm going to an indie show like right yard and um the style of wrestling that 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 aew i see anyways mm -hmm. is, is not so it's 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 a lot it's very rough around the edges like the old wcw or old sure. AEW stuff and um and, and the wwe is obviously like a more refined product or at least mm. it's it's a little lackluster for me these days but um you know we're in sort of a you know we've been talking about it a lot in, in this program it's we're sort of in this golden age of wrestling where you, because now impact and AEW and this whole you know sort of partnership thing um i mean do you do you ever realize that you're kind of at you know you're you're at the dawn of this almost this new era and, um, you know, being part of the Dark Order, which is one of the bigger sort of factions right now, a lot of, a lot of eyes on it. I mean, uh, do you ever feel the gravity of that? Um, it's, yeah, I mean, it's honestly sometimes like, is this shit even real? You know, like, like when I started, I always 
I always was very confident that I would make it, I guess, you know, make it to TV, but you know, it's sometimes it's like, it's surreal to be like in this position and being, you know, we get, you know, millions of viewers and it's like, this is, it's wild, you know? And, and you know, good for you for being confident. And that's something that, you know, to our listeners, is you have to be confident, in whatever, whatever you do, whatever you want yeah. to do. If you're not confident, then it's, it's going to be that much more difficult to get yep. where you're at. But you have to be cocky in a kind of humble way. I don't know if that makes sense or not. But 100%. Um, I was talking to, to one of uh, the students here. Or, yeah, and he's like one of my friends. And uh, he, was, he hasn't made it yet. And he was, was saying, like, man, like, I commend you for really putting all your bass, like all your eggs into the wrestling bass. Because I never had the guts to do that. And it's like, man, if, if you don't believe in yourself, no one else is going to fucking believe in you. You Without know what I mean? Doubt. Good for you, man. So, That's very cool. Yeah. So, so now you're wearing a mask and you're doing this thing. Do you mm. find it um, a little bit more challenging under that thing? And did you have to change your style at all? or, or just um, So I had to be, so now I have to be more, I have to focus more on like showing emotion with body language because, you know, you can't see it at all. Um but then again, it also there's advantages to it because now you don't have to worry about your, your, what you're doing with your face and showing emotion. So it's so when they present me with the idea of wearing the mask, I'll be honest, I didn't like it. Um, and now, like, I love my character now. Um, so it's it's definitely it was challenging because I never wore a mask before. But like, I don't know, like I I would do anything they threw like threw at me. I would, I'd do it to my full potential. I would never be yeah, like, well, I have to do this. You know, because people people really forget that with wrestling and any of these entertainment jobs, like it's still a job, you know, like you still have a boss to show up and do what you're told. It's not that hard, you know, you're getting that paycheck every first and 15th. No, I, I hear you. We all hear you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, I'm my own boss, so I don't I don't listen to anybody. But um, except for a, 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 a except unbelievable for famous band, but, uh, rock band. But but um, one of the things I wanted to try to get at is you know like you're talking about the psychology as far as mm -hmm. like the body language. Like now this is a whole different ball ball game, you know. And, yeah. and And you know, so you learned all this stuff over here on the West Coast. And you you go through the Indies, and now you're presented with this mask, and it's like, yeah. okay, shit or get off the pot. So. Right. Um, what, what kind of tapes were you looking at or were you, who were you looking, uh, getting advice from, you know, about wrestling, you know, under a mask? So like, so the thing is with the, the mask, the advantage it does, like I'm supposed to be like this, this monster, you know, and it, it helps me because like without the mask, I'm not super intimidating. Um, but with the mask, it's like so cool looking. It's like, you know, it's like, like when I put it on, it's like, I look in the mirror, I'm like, I'm a totally different person. Um, so I never really watched, I guess, Someone with a mask I watched a lot was Kane, but he's so big. Mm. Um, but I would watch a lot of like Batista, even though he didn't wear a mask, but he was still like that guy in evolution, you know, like the. the you take like acting, like, I don't say acting, but have you taken acting classes or just body language? I mean, I don't know how this, it all works, but. Uh... I mean, it just, it just kind of comes natural. Like if you wrestle enough, like I'm lucky enough to have a, a school here that I can, can, can wrestle at every day of the week. So. I, I can work on my, my shit all the time. Very cool. Um, so it's kind of like more self-taught. Um, and I'm a huge like trial and error person where like I'll have an idea and try it. And instead of like just sitting there listening to someone and trying to learn. That's called work ethic, Cody. Good for you. Yeah. Man. Very <laughs> cool. That is awesome. Now we had John Silver on a few weeks ago. Yeah. And John was talking about his transition out of his mask. Is that something you're yeah. kind of looking forward to is yeah. the day you can shed the mask? And, and listen, if you're listening on the podcast version, Cody's not a bad looking guy. He's like Brutus the Beefcake, man. He, that's what they got. <laughs> the, the new <laughs> Brutus the Beefcake. I got to insult this guy called Brutus Beefcake. Uh, I'm talking about, okay, Val Venus. I mean, you want me to keep going? I mean, <laughs> wow. I this, this is a good looking dude. He's ripped. He's single, ladies. And you know what? He's a very nice young man. But Cody, don't kid yourself. There's no ladies listening. No. <laughs> You're probably right. <laughs> But 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 going back to shed the mask is that something you're looking forward to? Hundred awesome. percent. Have you have um, you talked to anybody who has yeah. worn a mask and did you get advice on how to wrestle in it? Because I know uh, Petey Williams used to have to do it a few times in a mask. He says it really cuts off your per peripheral vision big time, and, and it it affects how you wrestle. Yeah, it definitely it definitely took a bit to get used to in that aspect of like your actual vision and breathing, but. Outside of that, like, 
I transitioned to it pretty well. And uh, as far as the unmasking, it's cool because it's like, so I get this debut, I'm in a mask. And then when they finally unmask it, it's almost like a whole separate debut. So, you know, like I, I love that they started me in a mask. Now, it looked like in hindsight, I love it. When I, they first presented it to me, I was iffy about it. Um, but now I'm like, I, I talked to Cody about it the other day because, you know, I'm always spitballing ideas with him. And, uh, and like, yeah, cause he did, you know, he's done, he had talked about that when you're in a mask, it's almost like, it's almost like a shield. Like you can almost get away with a lot more right. and, and your career Can't you just can cut out grow. a little bit more right here. And so you can yeah. have peripheral vision. Right. Right there. I'm Thanks sure so. somebody out there, some seamstress out there will make you a mask. Yeah. Yeah. If you go on a date with them, like, like spot right there. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Thanks. How'd, how'd you meet Cody? Just obviously um, through friends of a friend and starting to wrestle. Yeah, so when I moved to Georgia with QT, he started the school and I was going through my second ACL surgery and Cody was going through some Wait. knee surgery at the time as well. He was done at ring of honor. I believe he was doing his indies and AEW wasn't even a thing yet. Um, he would come to the school and he'd always see me like rehab and then like working hard and stuff. So he asked QT, he's like, yo, what's Vance's deal? Like, he seems like he works hard. He's like in, in good shape, whatever. And he's like, Oh, he's a good dude. So then we just, start I went over and hung out with him one time and now I think I hang out with him like every week I go to his house at least once so when we Very became cool. me and Cody have became super close friends that's, that's how MR started too well you know that one of the things I was you know I, I, I love about AEW is the fact that you got guys like Tully Blanchard there you got Jake the Snake you know you got Taz you got all these really great minds and guys that have just are so you know you know set the bar Mm. set the bar for so many years do you ever go to those types of guys and 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 seek out advice or or has any of them approached you and and given you uh pointers or tips and arn anderson is another guy you know yeah um arn arn is in is like with cody a lot so he's one um i definitely don't seek out advice as much as i should because like to me like i understand they're my coworkers, but they're it's still intimidating because they're like legends you know um, yeah, but you know what? But hey, I, I want to stop you right there because, uh, listen, I, I have nothing to do with wrestling, but obviously baseball I do know a little bit about. And the younger guys like yourself are, and I promise you, and I'm maybe not everybody, but the older guys, your veteran guys, they are dying for you to ask. Right. They're not going to go be like, hey, you need any help? I'll promise yeah, yeah. you on that when, when I say that because, but I'll guarantee you, if you go up and say, hey, what are you doing on this move? What are you doing? Right. I'll guarantee you they will be there right then and there and yeah. then you'll have a friend for life and then you can have the little ins and outs because uh, i'll guarantee you though and tommy dreamer was on the other night and he, he said the same thing he goes one of the reasons i i really enjoy still doing this is i get to help younger kids out the younger and obviously you're still a kid and we're all old men and mm -hmm. everything but i'll guarantee you don't don't be afraid to ask somebody because i'm what's going to happen is 15 20 years from now someone's going to be coming and asking you and you're going to just you're, you're going to just throw up all over them with all the stuff that you've learned but so it's just like a, the, the trickle down effect. So don't right. be scared to go up and ask somebody. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because I mean, you're be a like, good one for a long time. Uh, Taz, I'm really close with, and then uh, Billy Gunn will come to Georgia a lot, like with his two sons, and, and roll around and wrestle. And Billy's like, he's so good still, like crazy how good he can still move and stuff. And uh, he's the one who is like always so willing to coach and help everybody. Very cool. I always thought Billy Gunn was was very underrated. You know what I mean? I yeah. Just, and I I always thought that he um you know he always just had you know kind of gimmicks that kind of held him back or you know sure. or whatever you know what i mean and and but i always thought like out of him and the road dog he was always the better wrestler he was always one sure. of the, the more the, the better psychology yeah, yeah. Of, you, know, you know as a fan but so you know and i know like i want to go back to the psychology part aspect of it because um you know we're talking about arn anderson we're talking about mm -hmm. jake snake Tully blanchard you know these guys and this is like kind of i feel like the dark order is a very like when silver was on i sort of related them to uh related you guys to kind of like kevin sullivan's dungeon dungeon of Doom. yeah if you're familiar with that yep and uh but how do you see how do where do you see the dark order going do you think do you because right now it's kind of almost there's a lot transition. of is that it's in transition right now transition yeah um I mean, so the th cool thing with us is like, as a unit together, we're all really cool because we're all super different. Um, 
And I think we all we all have our own separate like identities and characters, whether it's through BTE or how we wrestle. Like nobody's the same. So we're like we're a cool team, but we all also have potential to be like major breakout stars. Um, so as far as like the direction Dark Order is heading, I mean, I don't know really. I, I mean, whatever they throw at us, you know. Like I mean, I love I love us as as a group and as a unit though, and I like that we all have our own. You know, it's not like we're all just cookie cutter, like, you know, dark order mask, like, you know, everyone's everyone's different. So that's what I like about it. I want to take this back to you again and talk a little bit about your evolution, because we're we're seeing a young guy in his I mean, even before his prime, you were not even at your peak. You're you're on your way up. You're so young in the industry. Have you even because a lot of the guys we talk to, they're. They're kind of at the top or, or, you know, towards the end of their retirement. Sure. Hey, this early in your career, do you worry about the evolution of your character? Uh, not, I don't worry about it at all. I'm super excited about it. Um, I think about it literally every day, all day. Uh, I, love the, I love the fact of not knowing where I'm going to be or what I'm going to be doing. Um, I like the, like this, the, how it's sporadic and – uh, I just like that feeling of like the unknown and cause I know that, you know, whatever they tell me to do, I know I'll be able to do it. Uh, so yeah, worry isn't the right word, but definitely it excites me big time. Do you put a lot of thought personally into where you want to take you next? I mean, not even so much within the realm of the dark order, but I'm talking like five, 10, 15 years down the line because Lars and I, we talk about it all the time. We're not even pro wrestlers. We have our fake wrestling names, and we have, like, the evolution of who we would be, where we would be, and how we would <laughs> yeah, yeah. our careers. So being able to talk to a young guy right now, I wonder, is he the same dorkiness as we do where we're like – 100%. Okay, good. So That's, our, that's, that's any, anybody in wrestling, man. If they tell you different, they're lying. Everybody has these dreams and fantasies about where they want to be and who they want to be uh, – I mean, I see myself being in AEW for sure. Um, and like I said, do whatever, like, like I said earlier, it's a job, whatever they throw at me, I'll do it. Well, when you, when you got presented with this idea of the dark order, you know, we asked this kind of same, same question to, to John and mm -hmm. the way he, he interpreted it was like a cult, right? Yeah. So when you were sort of, you know, presented this opportunity, um, what did you do to sort of prepare yourself? Did you just kind of see what was going on and then adapt or what did you have an idea? Uh, yeah, so I also kind of took it as like a cult, but so when it got presented to me, it was with, with Brody um, and he, at that time he was really ribbon. Like it was like a, a basically like a, a, a Vince spoof type thing. Um, like he's like the, the boss. And so we did these vignettes and like, before I came, I did look at it as a call, but then as it was presented to me, I looked at it as like he was taking all these people with a ton of potential and basically putting putting them on like the path they need to be on. So like my my story is I was a former athlete and former male model and like and I had my dream shattered because of knee injuries and you know all this stuff. So it's basically like all these like cookie cutter things that they say WWE looks for, like you know, like underwear models basically. Um so it's like put on a mask and now you're one of us. But I, I took it kind of as a cult, but not entirely. That's my gimmick. If I was a professional wrestler, I'd be an underwear model. <laughs> Just that would, that, you know, I still try to work that character out with my with my girlfriend. But um, it works too. I mean, hey, you know. Uh, so um, going back to to when you first came into AEW and watching this this get, getting this opportunity to like come into this promotion not knowing what the hell is going to happen. How excited were you for that opportunity? Oh, dude, I was so excited. I, I like, I did the dark match with Darby. Um, and not as 10 as just my normal uh, Preston, vanilla Vance, green and pink gear, you know? Uh, and um, they gave me, they gave me a really good opportunity because most of these enhancement matches is like five minutes. You basically just get squashed. Right. Um, but for me, they kind of made it like an, 80 20 like 80 percent me and then he was just going to win out of nowhere like as soon as the bell rang i gave him a german suplex off the second and uh and so like it aired and it got a lot of good like twitter feedback and internet buzz and then uh the next day they offered me a contract like the day after it aired 
and I was like, damn, this is crazy. And I thought I was going to be that character. And then they presented me the following day with, you know, Brody wants to be part of the Dark Order. And at that point, I was like, oh, that's weird. Like, that's totally not me. Like, I'm not like a dark person at all. Um, but like I said, I love it. Like, I love, I love the, I like that they didn't have me just be me and out there by myself because it, it would have been way harder to get over by myself, to be honest. You know, you, I already had like Brody by your side. He's this massive star. It's like, I mean, he, he, he made the Dark Order what it is, you know? Do you feel yeah, like, I mean, do on, you sorry. feel like you could pull like a double duty because you're, you're masked? You're 10 in the Dark Order. Yeah, yeah. But you've got this, you know, cheerful, model esque looking gear. You are that guy. Do you think you could like legitimately pull off, like, you know what? Maybe this week I'll be this guy. And maybe- I would love to. I've thought about that. I've thought about, like, what if I had like a split personality? You know, like one week I'm in the mask and I'm like mean and dark, and the next week I'm just, I'm myself. You know? It, it's it's you know it's a angle that works well when it's pulled off and something i i legitimately love to watch in in pro wrestling i'm one of those guys that i can sit back suspend my disbelief for two hours and and enjoy what is thrown at me i'm not one yeah. of those guys that are like what there's no way someone can shoot lightning from his fingers or right oh, how does that guy turn i i right I, you know so i think that would work out perfect with you I mean, I would, I would totally do it. I think that'd be cool as hell, you know. Well, you know, I, I know for a fact that Cody is is uh, uh, a comic book nerd. Yeah. The, the time that I've got to, got to spend with him, he actually gave me his copy of the Marvel. I, what was it? Not Secret Wars, but um, what's the other one? The newest one or the late? Uh, not Secret. Whatever. When? Uh, not Civil War. Civil War. Thank you. And, okay. And. Um, uh, I guess my question is this, were you ever into comic books or sort of fantasy books or something like that? Is that like- I wasn't, I wasn't at all actually. Um, I'll watch like the the new stuff, not like Avengers and stuff. Um, But growing up, I was never into that. Like at all, I was into sports and wrestling and that's it. Which like realistically, a lot of wrestlers are super into comic books and it's, I guess it makes sense. I don't know. Like for me, I was never into it. The disbelief, right? It's like that yeah. building, and and I think yeah. that a lot of people draw from that because, like, when we were talking about the split personality, I started thinking about Two Face, the Batman sure. character. Right? Yeah, yeah. Something that could, you know, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I, there, people, a lot of wrestlers do pull a lot of stuff from like subtle, subtle stuff from comic books. So, oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, my mask, for example, is very based off the Joker. That's where I got that design from. So. What what do you personally pull from? If you're not a comic book guy, what do you use as inspiration? Um, just normal movies. Like, uh, every every movie I watch can be looked at as like a wrestling match. There's you know there's always a good guy and bad guy, and the good guy usually prevails like out of triumph. Um, yeah, a lot of like drama movies I'd say, and just like other wrestling. I guess there there are like. I guess the newer superhero stuff I, I am more into and like like I love the Joker character. He's definitely I like all the anti villains. Or anti heroes, I mean. I like all the villains. So Well, I think in wrestling they play a lot better than the heroes in the faces. Yeah. Hundred percent. I mean, you look at the Punisher, I think the Punisher would be the the quintessential that's who you want to be if you were not a face character. Right. Uh, yeah, I mean, I hundred percent agree with that. I mean, this is this is fun, and as we're trying to stall for DMAC to show up, uh, we're trying to get a hold of him. Yeah, dude, he's the, he he got me hooked to do this. I know I was, he's the only reason, and he's not geez. even showing up. Trust us, Lars and I were just like, oh. I feel sorry so, for you, Cody. You know, I know that you really <laughs> want to meet him, and now you feel like you're getting half the hand job, and it's not the better half. <laughs> he's not. Uh, he doesn't even really exist. I've been catfishing you this whole time. Surprise! No, <laughs> we're having fun. <laughs> but you, you know, we geek out. Like I said, every week you are one of those guys that are climbing the AEW ladder to the top. 
do you look and, and watch other guys or because I know that's a slippery slope when you watch because you don't want to be a guy that's known for taking something from somebody else, but yet at the same time you want to learn. And I've spent yeah. a lot of time backstage at Impact hanging around with Petey. So I've I've seen and I've experienced the backstage politics. So as a young guy, how do you maneuver trying to learn but not stealing from other guys? Um so you can you can make anything your own like for like the the best example is the rock got over a freaking elbow drop and it's the people's elbow though so like cool every kid imitated that you know but all it was was an elbow drop so you can you can take anything and just spin it and make it your own um that's something that that qt and cody are really big on we're just like especially now in, in day and age everything has been done from you know a lot of character stuff to to moves especially like everything has been done so you just have to find that little subtle difference to truly make it yours um i mean like i watch a lot of old wrestling too that's you know that's like super outdated because it's like people forget about some cool stuff they used to do that is was kind of lost um like i like i said like my my biggest move is a is a spine buster it's just a spine buster but it's how I pop up and flex and look at the camera people like, you know, it's at the end of the day, it's just a spine buster. But, but how, so you watch the other stuff, you're pulling the spine buster. What's... So, I, so I pulled the spine buster from Batista. He was one of my favorites growing up. Okay. That's where I was going with that because there's the Batista spine buster. You have the Arn Anderson spine buster. Yeah. You have uh what is it? Booker T had a very nice looking spine Booker, buster. Too. Yeah. And the rock did too. The rock, the rock was very similar to, to Batista. Yeah, so that's what I was trying to, do, you know. But the Batista one is nice. The Batista one's my favorite. How he just pops up and he gets all fired. Cause it, I mean, I don't know, dude. When I hit that move, it just naturally makes me super fucking jacked up. So, like, I, bro, I, bro, you told me that ten was. Oh, sorry, bro, you told me that <laughs> that ten was gonna be on, and it's just Cody Vance, man. I could see this kid up there <laughs> <a> time. <laughs> I mean, what's up? I don't kid? have my mask. Yeah, nah, that's it. You know what? Next time, let's show up with the mask, Cody. Okay, we got a, we got, a, we got an audience now, pal. No, that's that's good. He throw he throws them off from from appearances everywhere. Doesn't matter if it's look at how bad. handsome this kid is, and they throw him in a fucking mask. <laughs> that's just for the reveal. You know that, Lars. That's just for the reveal later on. The big reveal. Him and the Hangman are tag team, and you know, taking over the world as the. <laughs> Yeah. Cowboys and Indians or whatever they are, wherever it's going. <laughs> How's, I do. How are you doing, kid? Everything good? Good, how are you? I'm doing great. Well, it's a pleasure. Uh, we've, you know, text back and forth and yeah, stuff. Yeah. And, and I don't know if you told these guys that you have a little synergy because, uh, you know, a few of my nephews and stuff like that. Yeah. They're from the same area my wife is. So yeah, yeah. I love, I love uh, definitely Michigan kids and local kids. One of the questions I wanted to ask you because – um, I've been speaking up for the hashtag let them play and stuff. Um, you know, obviously like high school sports and college sports, how important were they for you specifically for you? Corey? They were my whole, that's what molded me. You know, they were my whole life growing up. So that's uh, no, that's awesome. And, and what's your favorite, what's your favorite thing about what you're doing now? Um, honestly being like, being able to inspire other people and motivate other people. Like it doesn't matter where you're from or what your background is. Like if you want to do something, just fucking do it. I love it. I love it. What's, what's coming up next for dude? You got some good stuff planned for the dark order and stuff. I you don't know, some... dude, whatever they throw at me, man, I'm ready. I love it. I love it. Go with the flow. It's, yeah, dude. Dude, you're a true Claire County kid. You know I mean? <laughs> I just, you That's what I was, tell, I was telling these guys earlier before we got on, like people get lost in like these entertainment jobs. Like it's cool you're on TV and but it's like it's still a fucking job. Like just show up and do what you're told, you know? Well, that's but that's what what makes it work, and uh, yeah. it looks like you guys are having fun at least. So it's always oh, easy dude, we have like, we have a blast in Dark Order. So blast. Let me, let me jump in and say this. One of the reasons we have you today, Cody, is because of your love of DMAC. So let's sit here and talk a few minutes about your fandom for DMAC. There you go. He was, he was literally the whole reason I wanted to play hockey. And I played for 12 years. He was the sole reason I wanted to play. My last three years of hockey, my mom didn't come to any of my games because I was always in the penalty box. 
<laughs> so, so was McCarty. So I'm sad. like, that's okay, you know. But you didn't tell him you were listening to Rancid before <laughs> the game. That's what <laughs> made- <laughs> no, I was always listening. I was listening to Eminem. That was he was my my big music growing up. Well, yep, that that's yeah, a little bit lower key stuff. Yeah, a little bit mellower than Rancid. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> Did you ever get a chance to meet D Mac? Did you? I, I, I think we ran across each other back in the drinking days when in Claire at 100%. Like, at the at like I met the story I met my wife in 2010 up at the uh, the uh, Irish festival. So it just so happens he knows all my nephews and stuff like this. But yeah, that's that was a great time back in the day. Dude, they it's for such a small town, man. They <laughs> want, like St. Patty's Day is that's the whole year. We get like sixty thousand people there, and there's only three thousand, you know, population. It's just yeah. a big party, you know. Especially, especially like ten or you know, like five, ten years ago was huge. Oh yeah, yeah. So that's that's the best. Awesome. I was in college, man. I love going. I love going there. Well, well, tell your mom I'm sorry, but you know what? I, I had to do it for you to get you where you're at right now. So, okay. <laughs> exactly, dude. No, my mom. Cause Even on my whole family's hockey fan, so like they were all jealous as hell when I told them I was talking to, to you. So I love it, dude. I love it. I'm sure we'll uh, we'll definitely. You know, I can't wait till you know the live events come. You guys, you know, start traveling again. And, yeah. You know, all these connections. I'm sure there's so some a ton of them that you've made throughout. You know, the internet or or through yeah, social yeah. media that it's like to put the face to it. So. Yeah. Awesome, bro. I wish you all the best. Thank you. As we wrap this up, let me ask you, do you have any shirts for sale? Where can people find you online? I do uh, shop AEW.com and I think just search either dark order or press advance. And then uh, my Twitter and Instagram are both press 10 Vance P R E S one zero V A N C E. Now I, I know you got to get going here in a second, but I have to give you all the credit in the world because one of the things that made me personally a fan of yours was your interaction with your fans on Twitter. Yeah. And do you look through the history of, of wrestlers and fans on Twitter? It's not necessarily a good mix. A lot of times it's oil and water. Where did you get your, your, I, 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 I hospitality towards your fans because you're you one of the most amazing guys on there. So this is how I look at it without the fans. Like, I would wouldn't be a fucking wrestler. So, you know, like the fans are, the fans mean more to the business than almost the wrestlers, you know, if no one's watching you, then you're not going to, you don't have a job. Uh, so, and me growing up, I was always fans of wrestlers who were interacted with fans who almost made themselves more humanized instead of like being these characters on TV. I like to see how they were as actual human beings. Um, and I mean, you'll go way farther in life by just being a good person than being talented at anything, you know? So that's how I look at it. Well, listen for everybody listening and watching the stream. The show's over for you guys. Hang out for a second. We're going to say, Dennis, hold on. You only learn that in the penalty box, by the way, I did. That's the lesson right now. You learn how to treat people respect. You learn in Michigan that you are a battery and people are your power. And you only learn that in the penalty box. There's the time on that. There. (laughs) Boy press. And then, <laughs> sorry, Dennis. I just had to make sure you knew that. That no, that's a lesson I just learned. So that's awesome. But like I said, for everybody, go out watch AEW Wednesday nights. AEW Dark is phenomenal. If you don't have time to watch it, make sure you make the time. Being the elite is something I've watched from the beginning, and I love the way it's morphed into almost the B show for AEW. You guys, uh, from the top to the bottom of that roster, are really putting on a classic television wrestling show that the fans and we all here on this podcast truly love. We have a great relationship with Impact, but we're truly AEW fans. So thank you deeply for doing what you do out there, Cody. Yes, sir. I mean, it's, it was, it's cool. It's like a, it's literally like a whole sitcom. You know? It is. It really is. <laughs> Storylines. Hey, hey do, I think Anna might like you guys. She like stuck up for it. Shh, don't tell anybody. Yeah. Don't touch. I heard I'm it. Just I watched the video. A... Okay. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thank... we, don't, we don't like five, though. Five kids. No, of course. Dude, it's like Dennis. We get it. 
Yeah, yeah absolutely. Like so, <laughs> so hang out here for a second on the video, guys well, at I'm home. Put, no, I got a next next show. We should put Dennis in a mask. There you go. I think every <laughs> show I should be in a mask. You know what? I'm gonna treat him like Excalibur. So I with or without the mask, it doesn't matter. Yeah. I'm like Jericho. <laughs> I could just take it off to the side. I mean, that's how expendable I am at times. Come on, Shabone. Shabone. You've taken a, a ton of time out here tonight to talk to us. We deeply appreciate it, DMAC Lars. I know we are truly excited that you took the time and wanted to come on and talk to us. So thank you very much. Thank you, man. Pleasure.